In today's video, we're going to look at using expressions in disguise. Welcome back to the Hive School, where we make videos to help you one up your live event production workflows. As you'll see, we finally made it back to the studio this week. We have a fantastic tutorial for you. In our previous videos on MIDI and OSC, we've used expressions to hook up control to various parameters in disguise, but we never really stopped to look what was going on. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into expressions and how to use them in your projects. So, what are expressions? Expressions are small pieces of code that allow you to change values within Designer. Expressions are evaluated every frame, and the result can be used to drive parameters within your programming. You can access expressions by right-clicking on a parameter, and in the box that opens, you'll see a field that by default will likely say expression equals self. Not every parameter in disguise can be controlled by an expression. Now let's right-click on the video parameter, and you'll see that this just opens up the media picker. There's no expressions box, and it's not possible to control the media parameter with an expression. When you input an expression, Disguise changes the color of the field to indicate whether it has understood the expression that you've entered. This will go green for correct syntax and red for an error. You can use the expression system without writing any code. To demonstrate, I've placed three video layers on my timeline. I want layers two and three to always match the brightness programming of layer one. To set this up, we need to view all three layers at once. Normally, left-clicking a second layer will close the previous one. To keep them all visible, hold the control key while selecting each layer. This will stack up their panels, and then you can drag them apart to see all three. To link the brightness values, hold Alt and then left-click and drag from the source parameter, that's the one with the programming, to a target parameter, and that's the one that's going to receive that programming. In this example, I'll be dragging from layer one to layers two and three. Now, when I make changes to layer one, layers two and three will follow along. We can see this happen in real time as I make changes, but it also works if we add keyframes too. You'll notice when we drag across to our target layers that the parameter went green to indicate that it's being controlled by an expression and that the expression is a valid one. If we right click that parameter, we can see the expression that Disguise has filled out for us in the expression field. It'll say module colon video underscore one dot brightness. The first part module indicates that Disguise is listening to another module. It's worth noting here that in previous versions of Disguise, what we now call layers were previously called modules. If you've watched some of my other videos, I'll often use these terms interchangeably. Old habits definitely die hard. But I digress. The first part of the expression tells us that we're listening to another module or layer. The part after the colon specifies the module, in this case, layer one. And then the part after the dot indicates which parameter, so that's brightness. The power of the expression system is that there's no rules as to what you can link together. If you want to drive your hue shift from your brightness, then you do you. If the click and drag method of setting up expressions felt familiar, then it might be because you've used it before to connect an external MIDI controller to your project. We recently made a video that shows the whole process of setting up MIDI with Disguise, so I'd recommend you watching that when you get a chance. We can recap quickly. Once you have your controller set up and mapped, you can alt-drag between the virtual MIDI device in Disguise and the parameter that you want to control. Once again, you can right-click on your parameter to view the expression that Disguise has created. While it's interesting to see what's going on in the expression field when you create these links, I wouldn't worry too much about trying to memorize the syntax here. It's rarely going to be faster than clicking and clicking to create those connections. If you're enjoying the content and you want to help us keep creating, perhaps consider supporting us on Ko-fi. Your contributions, big or small, will go a long way to helping us bring you more of what you love. Head over to kofi.com forward slash hive school to show your support. And thank you for helping us make this all possible. Sometimes when programming, it's not possible to click and drag between layers. A great example of this is when you need to link two parameters on totally different transports. The solution, variables. You can store value in a variable by simply using, hey, yes, I was about to tell you a lie about how to declare a variable. What you need to do in the expression field is use your variable name and then equal self. Okay, back to Studio Rich. 
Let's walk through an example. I'll program keyframes into the brightness parameter on our video layer here to create some values. And once I'm happy with my keyframes, I right click and then go to the expression field and use These will store those keyframe values into the variable, my variable name. Fun fact, the default self is actually a variable too. It's a local variable created by disguise that points to the value of the program keyframes. As I mentioned earlier, expressions are evaluated every frame. This means that for every frame played, the keyframe value from this brightness parameter is stored in the variable, my variable name. Let's move to another transport. As you can see, the video layer where we set up our variable is no longer visible. However, we can still access those values by pulling them back from our variable. Let's add a new video layer and give it some content. In the brightness parameter, I'm going to insert our variable name into the expression field. Now the keyframe values from our other transport are controlling our brightness. The method I've just shown you has now become the old way of working with variables. And while it still works well, one of the disadvantages of creating variables within a layer designed for something else is that there's no easy way to see which variables have been defined and what they're controlling. Disguise has recently introduced a new layer called the expression variable layer. This allows you to generate a variable and then keyframe values for it. The overall technique doesn't really change much, but now you have a specific place to define your variables. If you're going to be handing over your show file, it's now a lot easier to see what's going on. Along with the expression variable layer, there's now also expression variable devices. This works in a similar way, except instead of this living on your timeline, it lives in the devices menu. Expression variable devices are much better suited to constants and variables that only occasionally get updated. Disguise has recently overhauled their user manual and they've improved so much of it. If you haven't checked it out recently, then this is your reminder to go and have a look. If you go to the Expressions Functions page, you'll see a full list of the mathematical functions that you can use within Expressions. I've got to say that how often you use these is going to really depend on how well you understand these mathematical concepts. There aren't many of these functions that I use on a daily basis, but I think it is important to know that this list is, exists and that it's something that you can come back to when you might be looking to solve a problem. I'm going to show you how, even though that my math skills aren't the best, that by researching the solution, I was able to come back and use a function from the disguise expression list to help me solve a problem. Back in 2022, I helped out my buddy Sam Lisher by helping to program the Stormzy Arena Tour. I'm going to show you a quick clip of it now. In the track cold, a truss is flown in and moved around a different angle. We had a clip of Stormzy dancing, which we called Mini Storms, which we wanted to appear as if he was standing on the truss. The challenge was that the real world data that we were receiving was encoder data from the two mo motors holding up at either end of the truss. In contrast, disguise screens work based on a rotational value in degrees at the center of the screen. We needed to calculate an angle in degrees from two points in space. MathTheBeautiful.com offers an excellent interactive web page that illustrates the problem and its solution. I'm going to link that below. So we've got a formula, a tan 2, open parenthesis 0.1, comma 0.2. This gives us the rotational value, which we calculated using a disguise expression and applied to the screen rotation. As a result, the mapping updated accurately each night provided that we received the correct automation data. And that's it for this week. We hope that you enjoyed this deep dive into disguise expressions. We'd love to see some of the expressions you've used recently. Why not share them in the show, show and tell section on the Hive School Discord? If we've saved you some time, please consider supporting us on our new Ko-fi page. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you.